sometime in 1858, 33 Pennsylvania college students formed an unofficial and unsanctioned fraternity called the Beta Delta. They soon earned the name the Black Ducks because they were a source of unmitigated annoyance to town and college officials because of their wild and law-defying behavior. To meet in secret, the Black Ducks secured several rendezvous spots around Gettysburg, known only to the leaders whose members could avoid the attention of town and college official. One of those secret spots is right behind me in this natural cleft of rocks, one of my new favorite thin places in Gettysburg, outside the town, just summit of Culp's Hill. In 1858, five members of the fraternity stole their way through these woods, labored to convert these rocks into a cave so they could practice their law-defying behavior. One of the members described its location. It's right at the crest of Culp's Hill. There are two rocks parallel with each other about five feet apart that rose to a height of 10 feet. We walled up one end, we made a roof over the rest of the rocks, heavy corn wood, and we had one carefully concealed entrance at the point where the upward swell of the hill gave a steep descent into our rayless dungeon. Black ducks christened it Dows the Glim a Scottish phrase that means extinguish the light, and its creation was intended only for privileged fraternity members to shelter from the outside world, a place to extinguish the light and to pursue who knows what kind of behavior in the dark. But something happened in December 1859. Right around Christmas time, the Black Ducks were celebrating the holidays in town when a fraternity brother brought news of a fugitive slave. This fraternity brother had found him wandering, fleeing, through snow-covered streets of Gettysburg. He had been hiding in one of the shanties down there on Washington Street, but a slave catcher uh, from below the Mason-Dixon, just eight miles south of here, had arrived in Gettysburg, and he and the local U.S. Marshal had begun searching that particular neighborhood, going door to door, which forced the fugitive to flee into the streets where this black duck fraternity member found him and brought him to the secret meeting of the rest of the ducks. After some spirited discussion, the law-defying black duck took the ref refugee to this Dow's the Glem cave. They hid him here securely, insulating him from the colded leaves and earth, no doubt warning him not to start a fire. The black ducks then secretly contacted John Jack Hopkins, the black janitor at Pennsylvania College. It had been rumored to them that Hopkins was an agent for the Underground Railroad, and so he was. John Hopkins, John Jack Hopkins, helped the Black Ducks contact some Quaker activists not very far away in York Springs who ferried this particular fugitive from Dow's the Clem Cave to Harrisburg and then to further safety in the north. Harold Wirt stated that the majority of the Black Ducks would have scorned being called abolitionists, and it never entered their mind to become agents of Underground Railroad. But this Christmas encounter with a fugitive slave, with an actual freedom seeker, whom they hid and fed in the darkness of this cave behind me, probably opened their eyes and their heart to an issue that could no longer be ignored. Over the next two months, the word of their actions filtered into the Gettysburg African American community. They became increasingly involved in hiding runaways that were coming up Rock Creek, stopping at McAllister's Mill just down here. And as an employee of the college, John Jack Hopkins could easily contact one of the black ducks who would then make arrangements to secretly transport a recently arrived fugitive out of the Douse the Glim Cave on Culp's Hill and find him a safe journey to York Springs and beyond. No records were kept because ferrying fugitives was against the law at the time. But in this particular case, the Black Ducks law defying stands made them ready partners for John Jack Hopkins. Dow's the Glim or Extinguish the Light Cave can still be seen today. It's a little bit hard to get down here, but if you're ever here, I'd love to show it to you. Ironically, it's just within a few yards of one of the most famous and heavily visited Civil War battlefield sites, the summit of Culp's Hill. These rocks remain behind me as a testament to the righteous efforts of a secret group of unrighteous college students and staff who chose to defy an unrighteous law. Wild and law-defiling boys who built this cave so that they could dwell in darkness had in their actions begun to see a great light in the eyes of their school's janitor and in the light of the eyes of these fugitive slaves, a light whose source is the promised king of righteousness and justice.